We spin in the block and we about to talk about AI. And the reason that we about to talk about AI, because first I'm going to talk about AI and then I'm going to talk about real estate, specifically foreclosures. All right. So they made my decision for me. The reason that we want to talk about AI is because it's been a lot happening. And I know that I got a, a live stream that's coming up. It may be some combination of AI and stock club. So giving y'all a little bit of a preview of what's happening inside of the Patreon. We did block club. That was lit. We did stock club before that. That was lit. We did content creation before that. That was lit. So if y'all not a part of the Patreon link is in the description as well as been to the top of the chat, but it's been a lot of things happening. NVIDIA has been investing in open AI. They have been giving away stock percentages of the company. They've also been investing in uh, XAI, which is the company owned by Elon Musk at a valuation, I believe, of well over $20 billion. So there's a lot happening, all right? So I want to try to condense it down to you, for you, and let you know what I think is going to happen long-term in the industry, and this is what's happening. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong joining Squawk Box this morning, talking up all the investments he's been making lately in AI startups and saying he's looking for even more. For today's Tech Check, Christina Partzanevel is taking a look at NVIDIA as the new... AI bank, not just the center of the innovation action with chips. Yeah, I'm going to explain the bank analogy, but NVIDIA may be the most valuable company in the world, but it's also, to your point, becoming the AI industry's preferred lender. So Bloomberg reported the company plans to invest $2 billion in Elon Musk's XAI as part of a $20 billion funding round. Under the deal, about $12.5 billion will be raised as debt through a special purpose vehicle that buys NVIDIA chips which XAI then rents out for five years. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong told CNBC this morning about the importance of investing in the entire ecosystem of AI. Listen in. The only regret I have about XAI, we're an investor already. Mm -hmm. the, the only regret I have is I didn't give him more money. We've y'all hear what this guy is saying? Y'all hear what this guy is saying? Listen, bro, when you get to a certain level and you add that much value, the best thing that Elon Musk did, in my opinion, in which we know that he's invested in open AI, open AI is who, po when y'all have, all right, so let me break this down. Cause I got a lot of thoughts that's going through my head right now. I talk about on the Patreon where we should be investing our money as well as how you can leverage certain technologies in order to make your life easier and get to a bag, right? I give y'all examples. I show y'all how I'm using it. I do a compare and contrast of different platforms. And then we have conversations from an investment perspective. Okay. But here's the thing. It's funny to me how people were more focused on, I'm going to protest Tesla. It doesn't even matter. Elon Musk. I don't even think he cares about money. He cares about taking over the world. XAI is going to be in every single product that you can think of, including the Tesla robot and to, including the Tesla vehicles. Tesla, Elon Musk is a technology. He, him himself, he is a technology. His company is a technology company. They're basically making software that integrates in every single thing that you do. So whether you are Apple and Apple is making a massive investment, OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, Gemini, whatever it is, it's all booming. And the conversations that's being had is if it's a bubble. You a fool if you think that it's a bubble. You're a fool if you think that this AI is a bubble. I was listening to different analysts and I was listening to different people. We can't live without it. It's already here. It's already integrated into our devices. It's already a part of the way that our children study. It's already a part of the way in which people are leveraging it for content creation. I, people that are using AI on a daily basis, including myself, people that are using it in corporate America, they will never let it go. They're already a part of the ecosystem. Ain't no way in hell that any of this stuff is going away. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even minor. This ain't no bubble. This is life. AI 
will become a part of our lives. It just is. And when I say a part of our lives, we, we will live with it. It'll probably kill us. Hopefully after I'm dead and after my daughter is gone. So in 100, 200 years, it's probably going to turn against us and kill us. It's already sentient. It's already woke. People already have relationships with it. People are using it as their therapist. It will affect every single job that you can possibly think of in a positive or a negative way. There are people in the chat that will tell you right now that they are hooked. And you know what, Treese? You know what the interesting thing is about that? Is that you will either embrace it or you will get left behind. You will either embrace it or you will get left behind. The smart people are invested in it because it just becomes a part of your portfolio. It should be a part of your portfolio. Everybody should have, everybody should have, I shouldn't even, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. We're going to save that. I'm going to tell you the, the, the three that everybody has to have inside of the Patreon on the next stock club, on the next live stream that we got made some really terrific investments and and largely my only regret is that we didn't invest invest more backed by some serious capital between a 100 billion dollar commitment to open ai That's a 6.3 billion dollar cloud service purchase for uh from core we were just also spreading the money around seven percent stake in core Reef and venture bets over 100 ai startups NVIDIA has amassed over $100 billion in exposure across the entire AI ecosystem, and that number is conservative. But there is a pattern in these investments. You said you went to the dentist yesterday and they're using AI at the dentist? Mm -hmm. In the core we've deal alone, NVIDIA plays four, let's call it conflicting roles. Supplier of chips, equity investor with a 7% stake, financier with buyback guarantees for excess capacity and customer purchasing roughly $6.3 billion in cloud services. You have 44% Keisha. With XAI, NVIDIA is again both investor and supplier financing a company that will buy its own products, buy NVIDIA chips. The XAI deal introduces what amounts to chip-backed debt, asset-backed securities where the collateral is depreciating GPU compute capacity. We can how uh, that depreciation cycle is. Is it six years, three years, less? The question is no longer whether NVIDIA dominates AI hardware. It's whether the company is using its huge cash hoard to prop up demand for its own products, guys. Let me go over to him because he actually did an interview with CNBC and he went more into depth in it. And then I'm gonna give you all my thoughts before we go over to the next subject. Let's talk about vendor financing because that has been something that has raised a lot of questions on Wall Street since you cut this deal with OpenAI. Uh, yesterday, it, it, Bloomberg is reporting that you have a $2 billion in financing that you're going to be involved with with XAI to help them with these same stories. But this idea of circular financing, your, your customers can't afford to buy these chips yet, so you're going to help them out with money along the way. That leads some people to think back to what happened uh, with, a, with companies during uh, the big buildup like a Lucent or a Nortel in the early days. Is this different? And if so, They're creating how? the demand. Well, first of all, XAI, uh, I'm super excited about that's so smart. So some companies can't afford. Oh, man, I just realized that. Some companies can't afford the chips because they are the leader in chips, but some companies can't afford it. So what they're fun. So basically what they're doing is through their technology, through their stock, through their profitability. And in order to continue to drive demand, which also pushes innovation, this is why we have to remove regulation. This is why a socialist environment, a, com a, a communist environment does not work because what they're basically doing is they're saying, listen, instead of stifling innovation by not having access to it, they became the bank. They became the bank. Do you know how, how, do you know how incredible that is? So basically what they're doing is they're propping up the industry by making investments in other people to allow for them to be able to use their products, buy it, which boosts their value. And then at the same time, they also help to control the market while pushing innovation. They became the bank. They want to give away the money. They want to make the investments. Of course they are, Yakar. 
the financing. But here's the problem. Here's the thing that that, that we have to be uh, careful about. Um, it's after the Trump administration leave, will they be considered a monopoly? And then people are going to want to try to break up the company because they're going to say that they're too powerful. That's the one thing that I'm paying attention to is making the companies dependent on them then ultimately also serves as making them a monopoly because nobody can keep up with the level of innovation that they have, right? We'll get there. We'll get there. Yo, listen, listen. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. We're going to go into this more in depth. Opportunity that they're doing. You know, if the, only, the only regret I have about XAI, we're an investor already. Mm -hmm. the, the only regret I have is I didn't give him more money. You know, it, almost everything that Elon's part of, you really want to be part of as well. And, and uh, he gave us the opportunity to invest in XAI. I'm just delighted by that. And so it's, that's, not, that's an investment into a really great future company. And I'm really excited about that. That's not venture, venture uh, that's not uh, vendor financing per se. But what's going on, what's going on in the world versus what happened in 2000 is just dramatically different. You know, back then, as you recall, there were pets.com, hospitals.com, and the, the, all of the internet companies combined was, what, 30, 40 billion dollars in size? If you look at the hyperscalers now, that's where the first tranche of AI infrastructure is building. If you look at the AI, the, the hyperscalers at about two and a half trillion dollars of business that's already operating today, that business, that two and a half trillion dollar business and the capex that goes underneath that is about, call it $500 billion. This is a $10 trillion company, man, all day long. $10 trillion company minimum, minimum all day long. Mm -hmm. What are they currently doing? transition valued from a classical CPU based computing to now generative AI computing powered by GPUs, that transition is just starting. So we're, we've got to build into half a trillion dollars worth of capacity infrastructure that's already naturally growing by itself. And we're in the beginning phases of that. We're, if you just look at NVIDIA's AI infrastructure 4 business, trillion. you know, call it a couple of hundred billion dollars so far, you know, we're a couple of hundred billion dollars into a multi-trillion dollar build out. So that's number one. The second part of it that's really unique is that we have a new generation of AI companies. The new AI companies and it's gonna be like more that pop up. and Anthropic and XAI and, and companies that are, that are, well, you know, Thinking Machine Labs from Mira and Ilya Suskiver's SSI and uh, Misha's company Reflection. And I mean, there's a whole bunch of amazing AI, AI models. He's not here. trying to compete with them. That's the beautiful thing about the CEO of nvidia he's not trying to compete with them he wants to be partners with them man i wish we could do that same thing within our communities i wish we could do that same thing in our communities but that's not how i go i wish i can invest in other people's platforms and be like hey fam let me show you how it is that i can leverage my platform in order to get you more visibility and also give you the game on how you could be more successful but i can't because it's too much hate, it's too much backbite. And they giving you the blueprint, not only from a life perspective, but also from a technological perspective. They're creating the industry, then they're controlling the industry by becoming a bank and then partnering with other people and helping them to become more successful, which ultimately helps them become more successful. This generation of AI model builders, what's happened in the last several months, a transition happened that is really, really important. For the last several years, they've been generating tokens, you know, these AI tokens, basically at a loss. And the reason for that yep, is because the early AI models weren't, they were super interesting, uh, uh, really captivated a lot of attention. And so they let you buy they tokens. they weren't useful enough to pay for. Yep. The last several But now months, what they've been doing is they've been going to a subscription-based model. So they've moved away from purchasing tokens to a, OpenAI was one of the first ones that started doing a tokenized base first they integrated you and got you hooked by allowing for you to use the product then they allowed for you to upgrade and become a part of the ecosystem by leveraging tokens now everybody is moving to a subscription-based model which is similar to what apple is doing and apple kind of innovated that in microsoft also it's been very clear that the new technology is now reasoning mm -hmm. it's doing research yep. before it answers a question it goes on the web and studies other pdfs and websites it can now use tools generate 
information for you. It's going to be and a lot creates, of copyright um, creates responses lawsuits. that are really useful. I use it every day to the point where now the tokens are profitable. The, the yeah. question, though, is who is going to continue to pay for that build out? Is it the big companies like a, a, a Procter and Gamble? Is it a big? Is it consumers who are going to do this? I mean, my doctor showed me the AI that he's using, and it's incredibly helpful. But there's still a question about whether he's going to pay for it or the company he works for is going to pay for it. Well, hopefully both. I think the uh, there's the consumer. <laughs> he said, hopefully both. Part of it, you know, a lot of open AI customers are consumers, and they're paying for it. Um, but the thing that's really cool is that. The enterprise AI build-out that's happening now, my my favorite enterprise AI cu cus uh, uh, service is Cursor. Mm -hmm. Cursor is an AI coder, and every one of our engineers, one hundred percent, is now assisted by AI coders. And this is crazy, bro. In order for you to be an effective engineer, you're going to have to not only learn the technology on your own so you can have a foundation, but you'll also have to be assisted by and basically become an AI coder. I'm glad I came up at the time that I came up. <laughs> I'm glad I came up at the time I came up. Uh, make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Sheesh, that's crazy. Hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. That's wild, bro.